from tiny deer to elephants smaller than man, and a chameleon that could fit on your fingernail. Island dwarfism is an evolutionary process that leads to miniature versions of mainland species, caused by the need to eke out a living on limited island resources. While a cyclops may not be what you immediately think of when talking about island dwarfism, it could have been the basis for the myth. Skulls of pygmy elephants were found on Sicily and other Mediterranean islands, and it is thought that the nasal cavity was misinterpreted as a single eye socket. In actuality, the pygmy elephant was a tiny offshoot of the extinct European straight tusked elephant. Females of the smaller species found would have stood at just 80 centimetres at shoulder height. The elephants arrived on the islands during the Pleistocene maximum, when sea levels were much lower, and were then stranded when the sea rose again. Interestingly, this fall and then rise of sea levels happened multiple times during the Ice Ages, allowing for three separate waves of colonisation, leading to a variety of different sized dwarf elephants living on the islands at one time. But that's not the only island dwarf. The smallest known chameleon was designated in February 2012 and only ever grows to a length of 29mm. Brachysia micra is found in the forests of Madagascar, where it feeds on leaf litter during the day and climbs way up high into the trees at night to sleep. High for them, that is. They climb up 10 centimetres. It was only discovered recently, between 2003 and 2007, and is horrifically adorable. Another island dwarf still alive today is the Key Deer. Found only in the Florida Keys, where they easily swim between islands in search for fresh water, Key Deer are the smallest species of deer found in North America, and females stand at only 66 centimetres at the shoulders. They are also the cutest deer found in North America, or probably the world. Unfortunately, they are endangered due to a mixture of habitat loss and a complete lack of fear of humans in the species. This has led to a high number of car deer collisions as they're simply too small to spot and are more active at night. Slightly bigger, but probably no less adorable, the Channel Islands Pygmy Mammoth stood at 1.73 metres and was found only on the California Channel Islands, where they became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene. How they got to the islands in the first place is quite impressive. Elephants are considered some of the best swimmers among modern land mammals, and are known to swim to islands they cannot immediately see. It is thought that mammoths would have possessed this same talent, allowing them to swim the 7 kilometres to the island. Their small size evolved in just 20,000 years, in response to food and water shortages, but around 10,000 years ago, along with the rest of the Pleistocene megafauna, these dwarfs were made extinct. Island dwarfism has also played its part in much older Earth history. Dinosaurs are often viewed as exclusively gigantic, and none more than the sauropods. But Magyarosaurus, from the late Cretaceous, is an exception to this, and would have only reached around 6 metres long from head to tail. Claims of island dwarfism were originally controversial, until, in 2010, an in-depth study of growth patterns in animals' bones indicated all specimens were adult, and the sauropods weren't just small juveniles. Magyarosaurus isn't the only one though. Hattig Island, where it lived, was home to many dwarfs, including the hadrosaur Telmatosaurus, just 5 metres long from head to tail. These dwarf dinosaurs were preyed on by a giant pterosaur, Hatsigoptrix. Hatsigoptrix had evolved to be so big due to island gigantism. Interestingly, island dwarfism is observed to happen around 30 times quicker than island gigantism, and that's with taking into account shorter generation times for dwarfs. The reason for this is thought to be that fewer constraints occur with a decrease in size. Island dwarfism is generally, and paradoxically, caused by the same thing that leads to island gigantism. The availability of food. On islands, food is periodically scarce. Smaller animals survive better with less food and territory, so are fitter when these things are more limited. For carnivores, the size and availability of prey determines their own size, and on an island, prey is small and scarce. In addition to a need to cope with less food, is a decrease in predators on an island. Many species get big on the mainland to avoid being eaten, but on an island, there is often drastically fewer predators, and if there's no one there to eat you, there's no reason to be so big. Similarly, being big helps deal with competition, but there's not too much of that on an island either. Finally, island dwarfism allows for a small gestation period and short generation times, making a species much more able to cope with periods of resource scarcity. But perhaps the most famous of all to be affected by these factors is a species of human dwarfed to a height of just 1.1 metres tall, and that will be the subject of my next video. If it's not already up, I should have the Hobbit video here in a few days. 
Um, I'm recording this before I've edited this video, by the way, so I don't know where I am with the script on that, but the research is going well. Um, I've also done a video on Island Gigantism, which I will link to here. They're part of a series. It's been great. Okay, bye.